All right, so what is up guys? This is Coach Aleman and this online video series will cover everything you need to know to pass the 11th grade US History Star Test. In the previous video, we learned about industrialization and the Gilded Age. In this video, we will continue to learn about industrialization and the Gilded Age by working on some activities together. Remember, if you need more time to complete your assignment, you can always pause the video and you can always replay the video if you feel like you missed or misunderstood something. So here's the first thing you have to do, all right? So after you open up your Gilded Age US History Star View number three activities page, right? These are like your guided notes. The first thing you should see at the very top is where it says name, class period, your LO, and the do now. So go ahead and fill that out right now. All right, so make sure you guys do that. Remember, on the do now, all you have to do is pick two of the following questions and answer them, all right? Don't do all of them. All you have to do is answer two of them. All right, so for your LO, guys, students will be able to explain and analyze economic factors, political affairs, and social issues during the Gilded Age. Additionally, we will describe working conditions during the Gilded Age and how it relates to our lives today. So make sure you guys write down the LO. As a matter of fact, it's almost all written down. You just have to finish writing the rest. And that's pretty much how a lot of these work. Where it says do now, please make sure you guys answer two of those questions. That's pretty much it. Okay, so the first part of this lesson is economic. This lesson will also cover the Industrial Revolution. So let's go ahead and talk about the word gilded because a lot of the times we look at the word that says gilded age, like what does that mean? Well, gilded, it pretty much means covered thinly with gold paint, all right? So it's not necessarily completely gold. It's just covered with gold. So it shows really, really nice, but in reality, it conceals something that has very little worth. And that's exactly what's going on with the gilded age. So go ahead and write this down, guys. Where it says Gilded Age, make sure you guys finish this out. Where it says Gilded Age, it'll say dates 1865 to 1890s. Businesses in the United States grew a lot and the standard of living increased, but it was because of corruption and taking advantage of people. So where it says Economic or where it says Gilded Age for you guys, go ahead and finish it out. Remember, if you need to pause the video, you can always pause the video. Again, if you need more time to finish typing this down, please pause the video. Moving on to the next one. So who owns this business? Why is it possible to own businesses like this in the United States? That's going to be where it says image analysis. So for your image analysis, right under where it said Gilded Age, go ahead and make sure you guys write this down. Who do you think owns this business? And why is it possible to own businesses like this in the United States? Again, if you need more time, pause the video. All right, so what we have in the United States is known as free enterprise. Free enterprise is an economic system in which businesses are privately owned. They are owned by people and they have the freedom to operate with little government regulation. That's known as laissez-faire policies. So basically people own businesses and they compete against other businesses to make money and the government does not get involved, right? That's what's going on here in the United States. Now to us, that seems normal, but in other places, that's not very normal. In some places, everything is owned by the government. You go to the store, that's owned by the government. You go to a movie theater, that's owned by the government. You go to a place that sells vehicles, right? Like a car dealership, that's all owned by the government. In the United States, we don't have that, right? So in the United States, a lot of businesses are actually owned by people. They are owned by people like you and me. Moving on. So in your own words, guys, go ahead and write down what do you think is laissez-faire policies? All right, think about what that means, right? Laissez-faire, which by the way, if you don't remember, a lot of this stuff is gonna be in the previous video that we saw. So if you're having a hard time with these guys, I would suggest that you watch that video first, all right? So go ahead and watch that video first. All right, so moving on, guys. The next one is an image analysis. How is the way goods are produced in this picture on the left different from the way goods are produced in the picture on the right? Think about it. So how are goods being produced in the picture on the left? How are they different from the ones on the right? What do you guys notice is the difference between the picture on the left and the picture on the right? What is that difference? So make sure you guys write that down. And again, if you need more time, guys, you can always pause the video. Get used to clicking that pause button. Moving on. All right, so this is what a factory would have looked like during the Gilded Age. Everything was mass produced. So this is pretty much a picture of production or mass production during the Gilded Age. So notice how you have like factories now instead of like people making things in their homes, like cottage industry. Everything is, of course, now commercialized. Everything is mass produced. So that's what's happening in the Gilded Age. You start to see businesses start to mass produce things. Now, 
There are pros to that. When you mass produce, you can make stuff a lot cheaper. Why do businesses sell their products at high prices even though they have a low cost to, of production, all right? So why do businesses sell their products at high prices if they, if they have low cost of production? So for example, these shoes, they could still cost you up to $200, even though they could only cost $15 to produce, right? So to make these shoes would cost about $15, but they would still sell them at $200. So why is that? Moving on to the next one, guys, the Industrial Revolution. So where it says years, you're going to write down mid 1800s. And then you're going to finish writing out the rest, right? So the Industrial Revolution marked the change from making things on a small scale by hand to mass producing things by machines in factories. So mass production is going to decrease the cost of production, but not necessarily the actual price of the good. That is the industrial revolution moving on where it says summary go ahead and answer this question guys how did the industrial revolution change the price and production of goods how did it change the price and production of goods all right so now we're moving on to gilded age business and politics guys think about this right here so we looked at donut king right so let's imagine for a second you go to donut king and every donut costs a dollar some of you guys would already be like no nah, i'm not gonna pay a dollar for you know donuts from donut king but let's just say right next to Donut King here in Pleasant Grove, they open up a Krispy Kreme and they're selling donuts for 50 cents. Are you still going to go to Donut King? Of course not, right? You're going to go to Krispy Kreme and you can go ahead and purchase it for 50 cents. Now, Krispy Kreme can do that because Krispy Kreme still has hundreds of other stores all over the United States. They can afford to sell their donuts at 50 cents at this particular location because they're still making money at all the other locations. So even if Donut King decides, well, I'm going to sell my donuts at 40 cents, Krispy Kreme could still undercut them and say, well, we're going to sell it for 30 cents. And if Donut King says, well, we're going to sell ours for 20 cents, Krispy Kreme can say, well, I'm going to sell mine, you know, for 10 cents. And it gets to the point where Donut King's not going to be making any kind of profit. And Krispy Kreme can do that to other businesses because it's such it's a much bigger business. And that is the issue with the free enterprise system. And that is an issue that happens uh, in the Gilded Age. Because what happens is you have big businesses and they start to pretty much take over the small businesses, right? Small businesses have a really hard time competing with big businesses during the Gilded Age. So what's eventually going to happen to Donut King? Well, they're going to go out of business. And when they do go out of business, Krispy Kreme then can, you know, raise the price of their donuts. They don't have to sell them for 50 cents because there's nobody else to compete with. If you want donuts, there's only one place to go get donuts, and it's Krispy Kreme. So they don't even have to sell them for a dollar anymore. They could sell them for two dollars. So that's what's going on during this time. So think about it. Where it says image analysis, guys, according to this political cartoon, what was the perception of big business during the Gilded Age? So what is going on during the Gilded Age? What is the perception of big business during the Gilded Age? How do they make big business look in this picture? So good job, good job. Big businesses were monopolies. Again, in your notes, make sure you guys finish this out. Big businesses were monopolies, which means that they had complete control of a good or the process of production, right? They have complete control over a product or they have complete control over a service. Critics of big businesses claim that monopolies in the United States harm the economy by unfairly limiting competition. Big business owners became known as robber barons because of their ruthless business tactics. There's also another thing called trusts. Trusts are like business partnerships. These were used by big businesses in an effort to limit competition. A trust is another name for a monopoly. So in a business trust, what you would have is Krispy Kreme, Dunkin' Donuts, and Shipley's Donuts all together, and they're all pretty much the same company. They're just operating under different names, all right? So it makes it seem like you guys are have a choice, but in reality, it all goes back to the same person that owns it or the same people that own it. So that's what's going on with big business. That's what a business trust is. Which brings us to the next one. Complete the chart, right? So you guys already wrote down Monopoly. Make sure you guys write that down. If you didn't, you can always go back. Robber Baron, explain what a Robber Baron is. Where it says trust, I think that one's completely filled out. So now in your own words, what is a Monopoly, right? So in your own words, go ahead and write down what is a Monopoly. And then where it says, how is a trust different from a Monopoly? Go ahead and make sure you guys write that down as well. And again, if you need more time, guys, you can always go back if you need more time. We're going through these pretty quick because I want to make sure that the video is not too long. All right. So moving on, guys, image analysis. According to this political cartoon, what type of monopolies did Carnegie and Rockefeller have? So how can you tell just by looking at them? 
So what types of industries do you guys think these men control? Which by the way, it was all in the previous video. So as long as you saw that previous video, guys, you should be totally fine with this one. As long as you saw that previous video, you know exactly what's happening here. So we already talked about Andrew Carnegie in the previous video. He's the guy that bought all those iron ore fields. He also bought coal mines. He also bought the ships. He pretty much had complete and total control over the production of steel. That is a monopoly, right? So he helped popularize a new production technique that was a way more efficient way to produce steel. That is known as the Bessemer process. So in your notes, guys, go ahead and write that down. Bessemer process, you're going to type down a production technique that was more efficient, that was a more efficient way to produce steel. So Andrew Carnegie helped develop this process. So make sure you write that down. Again, if you need more time, you can always pause it. Moving on. So Andrew Carnegie and the Bessemer process allowed new railroad tracks to be built at a more affordable cost. Now, don't forget why railroads are so important. Railroad tracks brought Americans closer together than ever before. You guys remember we talked about that transcontinental railroad, which was completed in 1869, and that pretty much brought the country together, right? It connected the East Coast to the West Coast. It created a national market from coast to coast. All right, so make sure that you guys got that. The other guy is John D. Rockefeller. He made his fortune refining oil. Again, this guy's probably going to be in the star test as well. Now, Rockefeller formed the Standard Oil Company in 1870. And by 1879, his company controlled over 90% of all the oil refining industry in the United States. Rockefeller's company continued to grow, becoming a virtual monopoly. Now, you already know what a monopoly is, right? That's a company that has complete and total control over the supply of a product or a service. Rockefeller forced railroad companies to give him special secret rates for shipping his oil, while they charged his competitors much higher prices. And that brings us to the image analysis. So where it says image analysis, it's going to say image quote analysis. So in your page, make sure you're looking at it. It's going to be right after the Bessemer process. It'll say image quote analysis. What is the meaning of this quote and political cartoon? So go ahead and read the quote. And what do you think Rockefeller means by this? By the way, make sure you look at the image. Look at what's happening to all of his competitors, right? And look at the rose, right? It says Standard Oil Company. That's his business. Look how big that rose is in comparison to the rest of the competitors down there. What has he done to the other competitors? All right, so this is your next image analysis, guys. It says, what is the author's opinion about trust? What do you think this author's opinion is on trust? And remember, trusts are like monopolies. So what do you think is the author's opinion about trusts? Because of the lavish lifestyles of people like Carnegie and Rockefeller, the period from 1865 to about 1900 became known as the Gilded Age. But remember, Gilded only looks good on the outside. So on the outside, it looks great. Right? When people would think about America back in the day, they're like, wow, they would think about people like Rockefeller or Carnegie. But in reality, not everybody was living like that. Most people were living like this. So think about what that means, right? Gilded on the outside looks good, but on the inside, is it still gold? No, it's not, right? It is not real gold. It just looks pretty on the outside, but on the inside, it's just metal. Which brings us to our next image analysis. What is the meaning of this political cartoon? What do you guys think is the meaning of this political cartoon? So think about the Gilded Age and think about this cartoon. What is this saying about the Gilded Age? And that brings us to our very first chart analysis. So where it says chart analysis, does this seem fair? This is the distribution of wealth during the Gilded Age. Does this seem fair? So basically, of all the money that's being made in the United States during the Gilded Age, look where most of the money goes to. It goes to the very few people that are rich. But what about the millions of people who are poor? Does this seem fair? Good job, moving on. So next image analysis, what is the meaning of this political cartoon? Just by looking at it, you can kind of tell. And by the way, that is Andrew Carnegie. What is he doing? What are rich entrepreneurs and big business owners going to do? Just by looking at this, you can kind of tell. And if you're having a hard time, guys, check this out. Here's a quote by Rockefeller. So what do you think these big business entrepreneurs are going to do? 
And what they're going to do is they're both going to contribute to civic and social life in the United States by establishing philanthropic organizations dedicated to education and the arts. They use their vast wealth to fund libraries, museums, and schools. This is known as philanthropy of industrialists. So go ahead and type this down, guys, where it says Andrew Carnegie and John D. Rockefeller donated some of their profits to philanthropic. And philanthropy is just a fancy way to say charity. Philanthropic organizations later in life. And go ahead and finish typing down the rest. Carnegie believed it was the responsibility of the wealthy to share their excess wealth with the community. So he funded numerous libraries and educational institutions. And you can see in the picture, and I think there's actually a picture in your notes. That's what he's doing. Okay, moving on to the next one, guys. In your own words, what is philanthropy? In your own words, go ahead and write that down. What is philanthropy? And again, if you need more time, guys, you can always pause the video. I know I keep saying that, but I don't want you guys to like give up and feel like I'm going too fast. You can always pause this video. And the only reason I'm going fast is because I know that you can pause the video. So there's no point in me waiting 45 seconds for you guys to answer some of these questions. So because of that, make sure that you guys just pause the video anytime you want. And you can always rewind the video if you feel like you missed or misunderstood something. All right. So go ahead and write this down, guys. Big business in the Gilded Age. Here are the pros and the cons. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to read it. I want you to go ahead and read the pro. So go ahead and read it. And then I want you to just summarize in your own words, what is the pros? All right. So what are the pros of big businesses? In your own words, you're going to summarize. So go ahead and read it. And then in your own words, go ahead and summarize. Like what are some pros or what are the major pros of big business during the Gilded Age in the Gilded Age? All right. And the cons. All right. So. Now the cons again, read it. And as you read it, think about what are the cons, right? So go ahead and make sure you read it and then just a quick summary. Make sure it's in a complete sentence, guys. Go ahead and summarize the cons of big business during the Gilded Age. What are some of the cons, right? And cons are like the bad things. Pros are good things. Cons are bad things. Okay, moving on image analysis what is happening in this image and who has the power in this image how can you tell just by looking at it who has the power you notice what's written across their chest right on the ribbons they wear across their chest so make sure you guys write that down good job good job guys moving on to the next one image analysis what is the meaning of this political cartoon and what does the octopus represent so think about that what does this octopus represent but look at the head of the octopus. What does it represent? And also, I mean, kind of look at what is this octopus grabbing, right? Like, what is he reaching towards? What is he already holding on to, right? So think about that. All right, really good job, guys. Next image analysis. What is the meaning of this political cartoon? Who is the man supposed who is the man supposed to represent? And what is he standing over? Think about what we just learned. Think about big businesses, right? So what is this guy doing and who's he standing over? And if you guys are writing about how big business is starting to take over control of the United States, that's pretty much what was going on during the Gilded Age. They had so much power because they had so much money. And because they had so much money, they could sway the government decisions in the ways that they would want. And that's what's so sad about this Gilded Age, because they had so much power and they had so much sway over government decisions. But what about everyday people? Meanwhile, everyday people didn't even have a say so in the government. Everyday people were living like this. And if you guys think that that's like, oh, well, that happened a long time ago, coach. I mean, think about like today, right? So campaign contributions. So where's this chart analysis? How is big business control of the federal government during the Gilded Age similar to politics today? So these are major campaign contributions by big businesses to both the Biden and the Trump campaign. So make sure you guys write that down. Really good job. Moving on to the next one, guys. Again, I'm going fast because I know you guys can pause it. If this was if this was a live class, guys, I would give you a lot more time. All right. So go ahead and finish writing this down, guys. This is big business control of the federal government. All you have to do is finish out the sentence. 
So the federal government was bribed and corrupted by political machines and big business owners. Big business owners use their control over the federal government to grow their monopolies and prevent competition. So go ahead and write that down. Really good job. And there's a word here that I highlighted and it's political machines. We haven't talked about it, but we're about to talk about it next. But before we get to that, let's do a quick write. Why did government protect big businesses rather than protect common people? So why do you think the government protected big businesses instead of everyday common people? Now, remember that word that I highlighted? Well, this is what it is, right? So it wasn't just big business that had a lot of power. During the Gilded Age, city governments were often run by corrupt political machines. Remember, I highlighted political machines. The leaders of these machines are known as political bosses. So go ahead and write down what they are. So political machines, they provided jobs and other services in exchange for votes. They gained their power by controlling votes so they could control the agencies of municipal government. Now municipal is just a fancy way to say local government. So leaders of political machines were called political bosses and they used their political control to make money illegally and collect bribes. All right, so this is known as graft. So go ahead in your notes, make sure that you guys finish writing this out. Go ahead and make sure you guys finish writing this out. This is for political machines. And also make sure you answer the question where it says, why did political machines have so much power over local government? So go ahead and answer that question. And again, local government is municipal government, right? Municipal is just a fancy way to say local. That's like your city government. Right, moving on, image analysis. In this drawing, what is happening in this drawing? So who is in this drawing, guys? What is happening in this drawing? So think about what they're trying to do in that picture. Notice what the cop is doing. Read what it says on the outside, right? So think about what's happening. And if you're having a hard time, guys, check out this picture. I'm not going to tell you anything, but just check it out. Think about what it says, right? Think about what it says. And that brings us to that guy, right? So make a prediction. Who do you think this person is? What is the artist's opinion of this man? Really good job. Moving on, guys. Next one, image analysis. According to this image, why was it so difficult to stop these political bosses from being corrupt? What are they all doing to each other? Notice at the bottom, it's asking who stole the people's money. What are they all doing to each other? All right, well, that is it for this lesson, guys. I hope you enjoyed the class. Remember to answer all of your questions. Again, if you needed more time, all you had to do was pause it. You can always replay the video if you want. So really good job, guys. Thank you, thank you. Have a great, great day. Enjoy your day. Good job, good job.